Hello, we wish you all a happy and a prosperous new year as we welcome you to Gradient's weekly economic and business roundup for the week ending 6 January 2023. I'm Nishani Figuera. Here are the top stories for the week. IMF presses for urgent debt resolution for Sri Lanka. State-owned enterprises consolidated under one holding company. Cabinet decision on electricity tariff hike postponed by a week. China to further relax outbound travel restrictions. We will also briefly look at other notable news and wrap up with the capital markets update. In our main story this week, according to Kristalina Georgieva, Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, the IMF is working very hard to press for urgent debt resolution for countries like Sri Lanka engaging with traditional and non-traditional creditors, including China and India, before it grows into a bad surprise on the world economy. George Wa made these comments during an interview with CBS News, adding that so far the countries that are in distress as a result of the debt borrowed in dollars are not systematically significant enough to trigger a debt crisis. However, she noted that 25% of emerging markets are trading in distress territory. According to Cabinet spokesperson Minister Bandula Gunavardhana, a fully treasury-owned company is to be incorporated to hold state enterprises. All SOEs will be made subsidiaries of the holding company with arrangements to bring identified SOEs under this entity for restructuring. According to the Daily Mirror, SOE losses in 2022 are likely to reach 4 trillion rupees with the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation and Sri Lankan Airlines accounting for more than half. A cabinet decision to raise electricity tariff was delayed by a week. On Monday, Kanchana Vijay Sekara, Minister of Power and Energy, tabled a new tariff structure to the Cabinet, seeking a price increase by around 50%. However, Janaka Ratnayaka, Chairman of the Public Utilities Commission, the country's power regulator, stated that they will reject any tariff hike done by the Cabinet of Ministers should it not go through the agency. Further, CB unions have vowed to launch strikes opposing any such hikes. From Sunday, China is granting greater freedom to Chinese citizens who wish to travel overseas. Travelers will not be required to provide a reason to the government and will once again be able to apply for passports. This is a significant development as Sri Lanka welcomed on average a quarter of a million Chinese travelers each year, which dropped to less than 4,000 due to COVID restrictions. Meanwhile, the SLTDA reported that just under 720,000 tourists had arrived in the island in 2022, beating the previous year, which was affected due to the COVID pandemic. However, the number still fell short of the original 800,000 traveller target. India remained the top tourist source market with just over 123,000. Moreover, according to Harin Fernando, Minister of Tourism, an arrival target of 1.5 million tourists is set for the year 2023 and 3 million for the next year. In other news, the Sri Lankan cabinet has approved the import of eggs. Retail prices have steeply risen following high feeder costs and as well as maize imports only being allowed by a select few importers. However, the State Veterinary Surgeons Association urged the government to reconsider the decision to import eggs, citing risks of the infectious disease avian influenza. Meanwhile, the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation reduced the price of auto diesel by 15 rupees to 405 rupees a litre and kerosene by 10 rupees to 355 rupees. Other fuel categories were left unchanged. Moreover, excise duty on liquor was increased by 20%. And now let's take a look at the weekly movement of the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index at the Columbus Stock Exchange. At the Treasury Bill auction held on Wednesday, yields on all maturities fell. Of the 260 billion rupees worth of bids, about 98 billion rupees were accepted. This comes as the central bank limits the access standing deposit facility to five times a month and the overnight standing lending facility to 90% of the statutory reserve requirement of a lender. 
And here's how the rupee performed against the dollar this week. And that's a wrap for this week. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel at the link below for more updates on economic and business developments in Sri Lanka. Until we'll see you again next week. Thank you for watching. Stay safe.